Hello YouTubers and welcome to the Rodney1279 channel on this March 18th day of 2014 and we're going to be doing our daily Bible reading and this is our 12th day of Lent. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for allowing us to get in this word in the name of Jesus. Now God, give us the strength to do your word and give us the guidance to hear your word in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, God, as we get ready to go forth into these scriptures, let us have clarity as we read your word. And let us meditate on your word in the name of Jesus. And we pray this prayer now, and it is in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Today's scripture, now we're going to get right into this because we got a lot of reading on today. Today's scripture is going to be found in Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, verse 10. Through, we're going to read all the way up to chapter 25, verse 19. But it looks like we're going to skip. So it ain't going to be as long as we think it is. We're skipping. Um, no, actually, we're not skipping. So we're going all the way up to 25, 19. Okay? Here's the reading of God's holy word. Okay. Marriage to a captive woman. Marriage to, to a captive woman. Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, verses 10 through 14. When you go out to war against your enemies, and the Lord your God delivers them into your hand, and you take them captive, and you see among the captives a beautiful woman, and desire her, and would take her for your wife, then you shall bring her home to your house, and she shall shave her head and trim her nails. She shall put off the clothes of her captivity, remain in your house, and mourn her father and her mother a full month. After that, you may go in to her and be her husband, and she shall be your wife. And it shall be, if you have no delight in her, then you shall set her free. But you certainly shall not sell her for money. You shall not treat her brutally. Because you have humbled her. Okay, now we're going to go to the rights of the firstborn. Rights of the firstborn. Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, verses 15 through 17. Rights of the firstborn. Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, verses 15 through 17. If a man has two wives, one loved and the other unloved, and they have borne him children... Both the love and the unloved, and if the firstborn son is of her who, he, who is unloved, then it shall be. On the day he bequeaths his possessions to his sons, that he must, shut, they must not bestow firstborn status on the son of the loved wife in preference to the son of the unloved, the true firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the unloved wife as the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he has. For he is the beginning of his strength. The, the right of the firstborn is his. Okay, now this is the one that I wanted to get into and I'm probably going to meditate on this one. Dealing with a rebellious son because I might be a foster parent again. Dealing with a rebellious son. Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, verses 18 through 21. Dealing with a rebellious son. Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, verses 18 through 21. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother and who, when, he, when, they, have chest, when they have chastised him, will not heed them, then his father... And his mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders of, the, of his city, to the gate of his city. And they shall say to the elders of his city, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of his city shall stone him to death with stones. So you shall put away the evil from among you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. But this day and age, you don't throw stones at 
other folks' kids because if you do that, you'll go to jail for that. But that's what they did in the Old Testament. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and uh, continue. We're going to go to various regulations. Various regulations. Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, verse 22, through the 22nd chapter, verse 12. Various regulations. Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, verse 22, through the 22nd chapter, verse 12. If a man has committed a sin deserving of death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain overnight on the tree, but you shall surely bury him that day, so that you do not defile the land which the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance. For he who is hanged is a curse of God. Okay, we're going into chapter 22 now. You shall not see your brother's ox or his sheep going astray and hide yourself from them. You shall certainly bring them back to your brother and if your brother is not near you or if you do not know him, then you shall bring it to your own house and it shall remain with you until your brother seeks it. Then you shall restore it to him. You shall do the same thing with his donkey and so shall you do with his garment, with any lost thing of your brother's, which he has lost and you have found. You shall do likewise. You must not hide yourself. You shall not see your brother's donkey or his ox fall down along the road and hide yourself from them. You shall surely help him lift them up again. A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. If a bird's nest happens to be before you along the way, in any tree or on the ground, with young ones or eggs, with the mother sitting on the young or on the eggs, you shall not take the mother with the young. You shall surely let the mother go and take the young for yourself. They may be well with you, and that you may and that you may prolong your days. When you build when you build a new house, then you shall make a parapet. Okay, I need to get a definition of that word. I don't have a pen over here. Oh here we go. I'm gonna get that definition of that word parapet. Excuse me, guys. I'm stopping to see. Okay, parapet. That's P-A-R-P-E-T. So I need to get a definition of that word after this video is over with. When you build a new house, then you shall not make a parapet for your roof, that you may not bring guilt of bloodshed on your household. If anyone falls from it, you shall not sow your vineyard with different kinds of seed, lest the lest the yield of the seed which you have sown and the fruit of your vineyard be defiled. You shall not plow with an ox and a donkey together. You shall not wear a garment of different sorts, such as wool and linen mixed together. You shall not you shall make you shall make tassels on the four corners of the clothing with which you cover yourself. Okay, we're going on. Now we're going to read Regulations for Sexual Purity. Regulations for Sexual Purity. Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, verses 13 through 30. Regulation for Sexual Purity. Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, verses 13 through 30. Let's read. If any man takes a wife and goes into her and detests her and charges her with shameful conduct and bring a bad name on her, and says, I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found she was not a virgin. Then the father and mother of the young woman shall take and bring out the evidence of the young woman's virginity to the elders of the city at the gate. And the young woman's father shall say to the elders, I gave my daughter to this man as wife, and he detests her. Now he has charged her with shameful conduct 
saying, I found your daughter was not a virgin. And yet these are the evidences of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Then the elders of that city shall take that man and punish him. And they shall find him 100 shekels of silver and give them to the father of the young woman because he has brought a bad name on a virgin of Israel and she shall be his wife. He cannot divorce her all his days. But if the thing is true and evidences of virginity are not found for the young woman, then they shall bring out the young woman to the door of her father's house and the men of her city shall stone her to death with stones because she has done a disgraceful thing in Israel to play the harlot in the father's house. So you shall put away the evil from among you. If a man is found lying with a woman married to a husband, then both of them shall die. The man that lay with the woman and the woman, so you shall put away the evil from Israel. If a, if a young woman who is a virgin is betrothed to a husband and a man and a man finds her in the city and lies with her then you shall you shall bring them both out to the city of the of that to the gate of that city and you shall stone them to death with stones the young woman because she did not cry out in the city and the man because he humbled his neighbor's wife so you shall put away the evil from among you but if a man finds a betrothed young woman in the countryside and the man forces her and lies with her, then only the man who lay with her shall die. But you shall do nothing to the young woman. There is in the young woman no sin deserving of death. For just as when a man rises against his neighbor and kills him, even so is this matter. For he found her in the countryside, and the, and the betrothed young woman cried out, but there was no one to save her. If a, man, if a man finds a young woman who is a virgin, who is not betrothed, and he seizes her and lies with her, and they are found out, then the, man, then the man who lay with her shall give to the young woman's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife because he has humbled her. He shall not be permitted to divorce her all his days. A man should not take his father's wife nor unco uncover his father's bed. Okay, now we're going to go into regulations concerning worship. Regulations concerning worship. Deuteronomy, the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 8. Regulations concerning worship. Deuteronomy, the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 8. He who is emascul emasculated by crushing or mutilation shall not enter the assembly of the Lord. One of Ill illegitimate birth shall not enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to the tenth generation, none of the descendants shall enter the assembly of the Lord. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter the assembly of the Lord, even to the tenth generation. None of his descendants shall enter the assembly of the Lord forever, because they did not meet you with bread and water on the road when you came out of Egypt, and because they hired against you Balaam, the son of Beer, from Petar, a Mesopotamia, to curse you. No, nevertheless, the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam, but the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you, because the Lord your God loves you. You shall not seek their peace nor their prosperity all your days forever. You shall not abhor an Edomite, for he is your brother. You shall not abhor an Egyptian, because you were an alien in his land. The children of the third generation born to them may enter the assembly of the Lord. Okay, now we're going to go with miscellaneous regulations. Miscellaneous regulations. Deuteronomy, the 23rd chapter, verse 9, through the 25th chapter, verse 19. 
Miscellaneous Regulations, Deuteronomy, the 23rd chapter, verse 9, to the 25th chapter, verse 19. When the army goes out against your enemies, then keep yourself from every wicked thing. If there is any man among you who becomes unclean by some occurrence in the night, then he shall go outside the camp. He shall not come inside the camp, but it shall be when evening comes that he shall watch with water, and when the sun sets, he may come into the camp. Also you shall have a place outside the camp where you may go out, and you shall have an implement among your equipment. And when you sit down outside, you should dig with it and turn and cover your refuse. For the Lord your God walk in the midst of your camp to deliver you and give you and give your enemies over to you. Therefore, your camp shall be holy, and he may see no unclean thing among you and turn away from you. You shall not give back to his master, the slave who has escaped from his master to you. He may dwell with you in the midst in the place which he chooses within one of your gates, where it seems best to him. You shall not oppress him. There shall be no ritual harlot of the daughters of Israel or a perverted one of the sons of Israel. You shall not bring the wages of a harlot or the price of a dog to the house of the Lord your God for, for any vowed offering. For both of these are an abomination to the Lord your God. You shall not charge interest to your brother, interest on money or food, or anything that is lent out, out at interest. To a foreigner you may charge interest, but to your brother you shall not charge interest, that the Lord your God may bless you in all to which you set your hand in the land which you are entering to possess. When you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay to pay it. For the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and it will be the sin to you. But if you abstain from vowing, it shall not be sin to you. That which has gone from your lips you shall keep and perform. For you voluntarily vowed to the Lord your God what you have promised with your mouth. When you come into your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat your fill of grapes at your pleasure, but you shall but you shall not put any in your container. When you come into your neighbor's standing grain, you may pluck the heads with your hand, but you shall not make you should not use a sickle on your neighbor's standing grain. Okay, now we're going to chapter twenty four. When a man takes a wife and marries her, and it happens that she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some uncleanness in her and he writes a, her a certificate of divorce, put it in her hand and send her out of his house. When she has departed from his house and goes and become another man's wife, if the latter husband detests her and write her a certificate of divorce, put it in her hand and sends her out of his house, or if the latter husband dies, who took her as his wife, then her former husband, who divorced her, must not take her back to be his wife, as she has been defiled. For that is an abomination before the Lord. And you shall not bring sin on your land, which the Lord your God has given you in his inheritance. When a man has taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war and, or be charged with any business. He shall be free at home one year and bring happiness to his wife whom he has taken. No man shall take the lower or upper millstone in pledge, for he takes one's living at, in pledge. If a man found ki kidnapping any of his brethren of the children of Israel and mistreats him or sells him, then that kidnapper shall die, and you shall put away the evil among you. Take heed in an outbreak of leprosy that you carefully observe and do according to all that the priests, the Levites, shall teach you, just as I command them. So you shall be careful to do. Remember what the Lord your God did to Miriam on the way when you came out of Egypt. 
when you lend your brother anything, you shall not go into his house to get his pledge. You shall not, you, you, okay, you shall stand outside, and the man to whom you lend shall bring the pledge out to you. If the man is poor, you shall not keep his pledge overnight. You shall in any case return the pledge to him again when the sun goes down, that he may sleep in his own garment and bless you, and it shall be righteousness to you before the Lord your God. You shall not oppress a high servant who is poor and needy, whether one of you, your brethren or one of the aliens who is in your land within your gates. Each day you shall give him his wages and not let the sun go down on it, for he is poor and has set his heart on it, lest he cry out against you to the Lord, and it be and it be sin to you. Fathers, fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor children be put to death for their fathers. A person a person shall be put to death for his own sin. You shall not, you shall not pervert justice due to the stranger or the fatherless, nor take a widow's garment as a pledge. But you shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. Therefore, I command you to do this thing. When you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you when you beat your olives, your olive trees, you shall you shall not go over the bowls again. It shall be it shall be for the stranger, the fatherless and the widow when you gather when you gather the grapes of your vine yard you shall not glean it afterward it shall be it shall be for the stranger the fatherless and the widow and you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt therefore i command you to do this thing going to chapter 25 of Deuteronomy if there is a dispute between men and they come to court that the judges may judge them, and they justify the righteous and condemn the wicked, then it shall be. If the wicked man deserves to be beaten, that the judge will cause him to lie down and be beaten in his presence according to his guilt with a certain number of blows. Forty blows he may give him and no more, lest he should exceed this and beat him with many blows above these, and your brother be humiliated in your sight. You shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. If brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, the widow of the dead man shall not be married to a stranger outside the family. Her husband's brother shall go into her, take her as his wife, and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. And it shall be that the firstborn son which she bears will succeed to the name of his dead brother, that his name may not be blotted out of Israel. But if the man does not want to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate of the elders and say, My husband's brother refuses to raise up a name to his brothers in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak to him. But if he stands firm and, say, and says, I do not want to take her, then, then, his, then, his brother, then his brother's wife shall come to him in the presence of the elders, remove his sandal from his foot, spit in his face, and answer him and answer and say, So shall it be done to the man who will not build up his brother's house. And his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him who had his sandal removed. If two men fight together and the wife of one draws near to rescue her husband from the hand of the one attacking him and puts, her, and puts out her hand 
and seizes him by the genitals, then you shall cut off her hand. Your eyes shall not pity her. You shall not have in your bag differing weights, a heavy and a light. You shall not have in your house differing measures, a large and a small. You, you shall have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure, that your days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord your God has given you. For all who do such things, all who behave unrighteously, are an abomination to the Lord your God. Remember what Amalek did to you on the way as you were coming out of Egypt. How he met you on the way and attacked your rear, wank, your rear ranks. All the stragglers at your rear when you were tired and weary. Excuse me. And he did not fear God. Therefore it shall be. When the Lord your God is giving you. You rest from your enemies all around in the land which the Lord your God has given you to possess as an inheritance that you will blot out the remembrance of Amalek, Amalek, of Amalek from under heaven. You shall not forget. And that's the reading of today's word on today. Father God, thank you for allowing me to get into this word on today. Now, God, God, give me the strength to hear your will and give me the guidance to understand your will. And we pray this prayer now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. This is Writing 1279 signing off today, and we will have another reading on tomorrow. This is Writing 1279 saying be safe, be careful, and take care, everybody, and be blessed. Goodbye.